I'm here with empowerment specialist, Yorley, Mrs. Yorley, Queen Yorley Huff, founder of Engendering Strength, Inc., and former senior fraud investigator for Cook County Sheriff Department, turned author and comic. Um, can you give us a rundown of your humble beginnings? Wow. Well, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That is uh, a lot. In summary, in summary. <laughs> well, I've done a number of things. So uh, most importantly, I uh, was an undercover drug agent here in Chicago for five years. And um, that is what my entire enterprise is based on. And after that, during that time, I started my own business. Um, I had a balloon decorating business at the time. And then I ended up after everything culminated and they kicked me out, I ended up uh, going back to school and getting my, uh, finishing my undergrad and getting my master's and then going into technology to further pursue the case. So I ended up um, at Blue Cross Blue Shield, starting off in uh, their technical department and then working my way up to become a senior fraud investigator and then uh, separated from them at that time, a number of years later. A number of years later. So, okay, the book, the not the book, the comic book specifically, how did you go from that part of your beginning being an investigator to a fraud investigator to um, a comic? Well, as life would have it, um, I ended up uh, being discriminated against at the um, police department at my agency. And I could file the complaint internally and in turn, they threatened to kill me. I had to go to the FBI to get my charges approved with EEOC and after an 11 year legal battle, I won. So by the time I ended up winning the case, I was working for Blue Cross Blue Shield and um, I was preparing myself to transition to self-employment. Um, I realized way before then that I was probably too militant and got tired of downsize, right size and getting kicked out and discriminated against and fired. So I was just like, you need to, um, you need to fulfill your destiny and work for yourself. So I ended up uh, starting to invest in real estate and um, one piece at a time, one piece at a time, just building my portfolio. And as God would have it, I ended up having to file a case against Blue Cross Blue Shield for discrimination. Wow, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I wasn't, I described that opportunity at Blue Cross Blue Shield as the transportation to get to my destination because I knew once I won the case, I wanted to um, pitch for a movie deal. And I wanted to follow that endeavor wholeheartedly. And Blue Cross was just, I felt the transportation to get me to the destination, but God saw different. And before I felt that I got to the destination, then I ended up having to um, file some charges against them for discrimination. And we, uh, we ended up terminating our relationship. And so I even vested further into real estate and then um, ended up having my income replaced by my rental income. So, it worked out the way that it was supposed to. And I wrote my autobiography. I self-published it in October of 2010. And I really was trying to met, produce a manuscript to pitch for the movie deal, but it ended up manifesting itself into a book. So I honored that and I self-published it. And then through divine intervention, I took my character and created a comic book and a cartoon enterprise. So how I got from there is that I 
still was riding the train. I ride my bike to the train and ride from the train downtown to my office at Blue Cross Blue Shield at five in the morning. And my test group were my fellow train riders throughout this whole process. I had them reading and testing and like, do you like this? What do you like about that? What do you think about this? Is it everything? So this white guy, he bought my book once I published it and him and his wife, he told me, read it to each other. And they were so excited and animated that they just made it a part of their relationship to read my book to each other. And this particular morning, um, my bike is in the bag. I'm down on one knee. I'm talking to God. And I mean, I'm like, why did you give me this? And there's no doors opening. Where is the deal? Who is the person? Where do I need to go to find, to put this together? And I mean, I'm just going at it like full, like he's standing right there manifested directly in front of me. And this guy walks up to me with the local newspaper, it's called a red eye. And he shows me, he says, the comic book convention is in town. You should take your book down there and let them make a comic book character of your book. So I'm looking up at him and I immediately stop all mind chatter. And I just said to him, do you know what divine intervention you just spoke? And then he just smiled and walked away. And then my conversation with God immediately changed. Like, okay, if this is what you want me to do, then send me who I need because I'm a cartoon girl. I'm not a comic book girl. Right, right. And literally after I said that, everyone that I needed came out of the woodwork. Every, I was meeting somebody every day, every other day, every weekend, everywhere I went, everybody that I needed just came into existence. And we moved forward and started creating the characters, writing the Bibles for the characters, uh, character development, um, deciding on what they would look like, what their powers would be, what their costumes would be, what, who is this whole entity? And we just started working and that's how, that's how I get from. <laughs> no, that's okay. Because you know what? Those were some of my questions. Like how, who, how did the characters become developed? We know how the central character became developed because that's derived from you, correct? Yes. So the other characters, it was just about a team of people. So you manifested, God came through in a clutch and yes. it took off. So yes. when did you uh, publish your first comic book and do you think this is a market for women? Target market, that's just comic books alone. That's mm -hmm. not the toys, that's not the movies, that's not the animations, that's not the cartoons, that's not the gear. That's the comic book industry, the books by themselves. 92 million and less than 5% are minorities and less than that are women. And none of that is a real live superhero. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so you make you breaking barriers and making history. Me and Jay was just going back and forth, and I'm like, "Do you think the character off the wire is based off of her?" <laughs> well, I have been told, I have been told a few shows are very like my story, but I just keep diligently working. No one can tell my story but me, and it is based on the true life story. So therefore, there is. Um, there are things that are like, but none of it is. Period, Pooh. Exactly. So, <laughs> so how many comic books do you have? Uh, and where can viewers like pick pick up a copy? Because it's hard. It's a it's not technically a hard copy, but it's a it's like it's a tangible. Comic, it's comic yeah. Book. yeah, yeah, it's a comic book. Um, I have five in print now, in production now, and then I'm working on the sixth book now mm -hmm. um i have a prototype for my action figures i have fragrances i have an entire line of gear um i've just been creating and creating and creating waiting for uh one 
entity to take off and open in the door for the rest. It's already taken off. I mean, you said a figure, so you're getting a doll? Like, let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, every, uh, you know, the toy is a whole, the toys are a whole nother billion dollar industry. And um, most of the characters have action figures. So I just had the opportunity to start early working on most of the things that I worked on. You'll find that in the comic book industry, there's really no one doing what I'm doing with my my enterprise. You know, nobody pretty much has the plethora of gear that I have, the merchandising part of it, um, the fragrances, the, the action figures. Um, I've even created a uh, my first shoes, uh, and I'm looking to just work on building her universe now. Okay, okay, okay. So when you say her universe, what does that entail? So Agent Huff is now um, she is me, but she's on a journey, and there is an entire the elders in the series so far the elders have located her and they've uh, they've given her powers but they are waiting to see what she does with those powers and to make sure that she understands that the powers that she possess is not for her but for others mm -hmm. and once she gets that and demonstrates that on her own, then the elders will release an entire universe to her. So that means that she will have um, power uh, partners all over the universe, all over the world. And we will be taking her to different countries to engage and empower those women that she finds and unifies with. And it all becomes one relation and whatever the world and whatever problems or challenges that come along in this universe, then they will unite to resolve those issues. Now, you say a body of people came together and that's how you developed all the characters and moved forth with, with the comic book. So are you writing these series alone? Like what? Yeah. <laughs> I uh, write, I do the writing, the editing, and the publishing. I have a partner, Spicy, he's the illustrator. I have collaborated with Ashley. Um, Ashley is now um, doing work for uh, Marvel and DC. And yeah, she's, she's, I'm proud of her. She's, uh, she's on her journey as well. So, um, it's mostly myself and Spicely, and we sit down and uh, hammer it out, and then we take it to drawing and we draw. Um, he's an old school illustrator, so he sketches it out first and sends me the drawings, then I approve it, and then we scan those images in, and he inks them and scans them in, and then we do the storyline, and then he colors it, and we put the book together, and then I publish it. Okay, would you believe, I know you believe in manifestations because yes. your whole life is manifestations. <laughs> so <laughs> would you believe that your life is also Book of Job? Yeah, me and Job go way back, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, 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 real, we real family, for real, okay. like blood. Yes, so yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so, and speaking of Job, in a 2015 interview, you said that you would rewrite the style of character Misty Knight from Luke Cage. And now you're working alongside the legend who created her and many other Black super superheroes, Mr. Arvell Jones. Yes. How does that make you feel? <laughs> Amazing. Um, I met Arvell. I was at a comic book convention, and oftentimes I'm by myself, so it's like, a challenge to get to the bathroom, get a break and get back and not miss a beat. Um, this particular convention, I saw him and he always had a line at his table. And I said, man, who is this black guy? <laughs> 
with this line. Mm -hmm. That's like, that's not the norm. Right. So every time, every time, every time he would have a line. And one day I was like, you got to find out who that is. And one day I got there early and I called him and I was like, hey, my name is Yorley and I'm the creator of Superhero Huff. It's based on my true life story. And he said, yeah, I'm Arvel Jones. And um, I said, I would like for you to come by my booth and just give me your opinion. You know, let me know what my strengths are. Definitely let me know what my weaknesses are. How can I improve? What can I do better? So he came by, I still didn't know who he was. And um, he came by and we got to talking and he was like, yeah, I created Misty Night. I was the first black illustrator for uh, DC and Marvel. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and um, we just kept in touch. I had him do a pinup of my character, his rendition of Superhero Hub. And that's in the collection, a historic piece. Um, I got that from him and we just kept in touch over the years. And then finally, I think I asked him like, when can we work together? Because I need help, you know, with you have already sold, you've created the ultimate character. You ended up make polishing her enough to sell her I need superhero Huff, Agent Huff at that level. Right. And so he was like, well, I'm working with somebody right now and I have to ask for her permission. And I was like, no problem, whatever. You know, if you need me to send you some stuff so you can um, let her know that there's no conflict of interest, there's no competition, you know, cause honestly, I just really wanted his wisdom and knowledge right. to add right. to it because I really, whatever I put for, I really do 200%. And if I'm not going to do 200%, then I don't do it. Okay. So he um, got back to me and he was like, well, she's not comfortable. I said, no problem. So I waited some more years. And then he called me. He was like, well, the contract is over and now I can do it. I was like, all right, let's do it. Let's get it. <laughs> let's get it. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> like the patience of Job, I'm telling you, the patience of Job, patience every of Job. day, the patience of Job has just been the saving grace that pulls me through. And I realize that I appreciate that I'm grateful for all of that. And so I use that to my advantage, mm -hmm. not trying to force anything, not trying to rush anything, but in due time. In due time. Yes. Okay, KK. I love it. <laughs> Humble. So, <laughs> how did he feel about the comment redressing Misty Knight? <laughs> you humble, but that's his character, okay? <laughs> well, the superhero huff is based on me. Mm -hmm. And so the commonality with uh, Misty Knight is that they're Black females. Um, so he was just like, you got, you know, you got, it just going to need a little work, but you got something. And I was like, that's all I needed you to tell me. Let's get it. What, what's, what's the agenda? What's the program? How's this going to work? How do you see, uh, what's the first step? What's the next step? What's the next step after that? What, what is it going to take? What do we need to do? Let's do it. And did it because God broke you in the beginning so he could build you up to your humility, your patience and where you are now. And look what you Absolutely. got. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. So now y'all are working on a new project. So can you talk about that? Well, we are uh, full throttle on um, pitching for the movie deal. Mm -hmm. um, that has been just my initial goal from the time I got the phone call that we won. And by the way, we won on appeal. We didn't win during the trial. We had a 22 day trial, mm -hmm. had my house on fire during the trial. They confessed to everything and they still were found not guilty. Wow. So I um, ended up having to appeal and I won on appeal. 
And every since then, just from the beginning, it's just been a movie. It's just been a movie. That's all I can say. And it's never been a question of if, it's just a matter of when. That's right. And so we are um, moving tenaciously ahead with that project and that goal. And we are going to make it happen. Congratulations, Queen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so black, positive black representation. Would you create a villain aside from your characters in Superhero Huff? Yeah, there's a villain in the comic book series. He was hired. Um, so Superhero Huff in the comic book series is me animated. She's an undercover drug agent with natural powers. And she belongs to the dossier, which is Department of Special Investigations, which is a undercover agency that has numerous agents, but they all have natural powers, supernatural powers that they were gifted with. The weapons that they carry and the weaponry that they use is just the front. Vincent Gates is the keeper of the agency and the keeper of the agents. He is the only one that knows that these agents are supernatural power agents and they have weapons. So it's just, <laughs> I just gotta tell the, just gotta tell the story. I just gotta tell the story. Well, you don't sell it from a place of vagueness or, or uncertainty. So that speaks to your passion about your, your, your characters, like your beloved yes. characters, whether they're bad or good now. Right. <laughs> well, the, the, um, the villain, like I said, he's the hired assassin, but he ends up falling in love with her. And then we find out later on that he is one of the actual agents, but he's he turned rogue. Oh, well, traitor. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't trust him no further than you can throw him. Okay. So... <laughs> Oh, with the clothing line, what, is it available or where can viewers find that? They can uh, definitely view it on SuperheroHuff.com, the website. Uh, I'm here in uh, Chicago most weekends. I'm doing festivals, but I'm at the Alsip Flea Market. I have a regular booth there. Um, the books you can get on Amazon but everything is on the website, superherohuff.com. Now I constantly create, so I save the latest and the greatest for those in-person visits. So you might wanna get to catch up with me at an event to see what latest things I've created. You don't let grass grow under your feet. I like that. Never. So <laughs> No, somebody who's like, nah, I got to get this going. I'm creative. I, this is what I do. And you yeah. just don't believe in failures. Like you got to- No, there's no such, no. no such thing. No. So then I have another question. And it's not about failure, but as someone who made it through to the other side, um, and I feel like we got to talk about this because you, like sure. I said, you went through a lot that would break somebody to yeah. the point of, who knows you know so you've endured a lot and you made it out on the other side so i'm asking you this because you're someone that made it out you heard about the tragic uh loss of steven switch boss dj yeah and that happened today so what words of encouragement would you have for someone that's battling or we don't know what they're battling but they're battling in silence i would say um I have had those suicidal moments very young, very, mm -hmm. very young. And I would say that you've got to encourage yourself. You've got to get a daily regimen of pouring into yourself. So like I get up at five in the morning and I do, I have singing bowls. I do my meditation, my gratitude my visualizations, my affirmations. I give myself a kiss and a high five in the mirror every morning. And I encourage myself. And uh, mostly all of those things I've done young, even when I didn't have a word for what it was, 
I was doing that young. So that was only God. When you feel the pressure and you have that negative mind chatter that begins to be so overwhelming, you must break that cycle. You must be able to have some peace and relief. And that might not come from your environment. That might not come from your social circle. That might not come from people you see every day. So you might have to um, create your own personal arsenal that you work on yourself and get yourself out of that low level vibration negativity quick and mm -hmm. fast because it it is consuming and it what you consume becomes your reality so it would be advantageous for you to start building for those who are challenged for those who feel certain at times all of that you can change what you ingest what you feed yourself and that's not only applicable to food but we really hear it relative to food only is what you become but it's also that that mind chatter is also that self talk is also the talk around you it's also what you ingest music TV, anything in your environment. So it, it is necessary, it is imperative that you change your diet of everything and start feeding your mind, body, and soul and your stomach good things because you are you from the inside out. You take you everywhere you go. There's mm -hmm. nothing you can do. You can't hide from yourself. That's right. And so it's uh, it's really a uh, spiritual fight to build that war chest and build that weaponry, but it is a must because there is so much in this capitalistic society has invested so much in subliminal messaging that we don't know who we are. Right. And when you don't know, then that is the tool of the enemy to come in and take over. Right. So you must declare dominion and power we are all individually most powerful than we ever could believe. It's only that we experience that when we go through a challenge, but why not have the knowing that you are powerful without the challenge? So when the challenge comes, it's nothing but a distraction because you know how powerful you are. You know who you are, you know whose you are you know the potential and what you possess. So that makes everything minor and you major. Life is chess, it's never checkers, never, yeah. it's never. Chess is strategy, is thinking, is silence. It's thinking moves ahead Checkers is fast, it's quick, it's emotional, it's reactionary. But you never win when you play checkers. The most you can do is get king and then you can move all over the board. Chess is at different levels, all the way up to mastery level. It's, it's, it's staggered, it's staged, it's at infinitum. It's what you can create in your mind for you to to be plus you have positions you have armies 
everybody has their place. Mm -hmm. Everybody has their power. But together, they all work to win the game. And this is why you're the empowerment <laughs> specialist. <laughs> I was just thinking, I need to go to her seminar. <laughs> this is why you do what you do and you can make these superhero characters. You believe yes. it. Yes, so, I know it. I've lived right. it. That's right. I am the human example, living, walking, and breathing. And that's why I share my testimony in various media forms as well as talk about it. And that's even why I really wanted the movie just to empower others. No one has ever won against Cook County Sheriff's Police. I wrote my own settlement agreement. That never happens. Mm. <laughs> it doesn't, because who's that smart? You. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know, it is like, I've got to share this because the power is what, everything you're looking for is within you, sure. but you have to cultivate it. Right. But if you're feeding your mind, body and soul and your stomach, all of the negativity, all of the low vibrations, you never get to cultivate it to understand it someone right. else subliminally has control over your mind so that's power the <laughs> mind can move matter if the mind can move matter what are you to tell me you're gonna discriminate against me and take my job and threaten my life and get away with it hell no period <laughs> exactly <laughs> It didn't. Look where you are now. Like, like oh. I said, you you have created this amazing platform. Um, you have so much going on. What <laughs> else will you be doing in the next? I don't even know what to ask because you're doing so much. <laughs> so, what should we be on the lookout for in the next? Let's let's give it a time frame. The next six months, because in a year, who knows where you'll be. In the next six months, you mm -hmm. will um, look forward to us to uh, to be in production on the movie set and working on um, an action film, uh, television series, animation, um, cartoons, the toys, and whatever else I can think of I want to do. <laughs> Sometimes like, I'm not limited. Whatever I say I'm going to do, I'm going to do, okay? Exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Uh, it has been a joy. You inspire me, Black Girl Magic. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. That's my job. So I did my job for tonight. And thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure. I thank appreciate you, you greatly. Uh, can you give our uh, viewers your website information? And like, are they following the superhero or are they following you? Well, uh, it's everything social media, Superhero Huff, and the website is superherohuff.com. And I am behind all of that. So yes, you will be talking and interacting directly with me. Um, we want you to always click the link in the bio and follow us on this journey. And let us help you grow at infinitum and understand really how powerful you are. <laughs>